right, back to the glorious Dunkin' Donuts. It's been a while since I've been here. Couldn't get to it in my last video. Kind of weird to have a pull there. It should be a push. You ever, you ever think about that? Sometimes they should be pushed, sometimes they, sh they should be pulled. If you're carrying things out, you're more likely to be carrying things out, so it should be a push. I don't know. All right, so we arrived here at the thrift store about 30 minutes before it opens. So I never actually drove down here, but it looks like they have a bunch of kid stuff and bicycles that they just leave out in the snow. This is where all the kid stuff goes, I guess. Kid stuff on kid stuff. This is what remains of the electronic section. Everything here is sold as is, it's not tested. Some cords. I know someone in one of my previous, uh, previous videos said stuff about flip clocks. I did not know that, so I appreciate the knowledge for that. I guess I missed one. Um, but then I went online, you know, they, they range. You know, people are saying $200, $300. There's a lot selling for $20, $30. So I don't know if it was a good one. might have been. But it's always great to spread the knowledge. That's about it for that. Got a bunch of clothes. Lots of stuffed animals. So here we have a Tiki Barber jersey. It's not bad, it's four bucks, but it's really stained right here in the middle. Might be hard to see, you kind of can see it. Like there, and there's another stain down here. That won't come out. Um, it's a good player to have, good filler jersey, but you might pass on that. There's some stains you just can't take out, and that's one of them. I did just see somebody pick up about 10 or 15 VHSs, which I thought was kind of crazy. The brick rack here is just, there's nothing. Thank you. Sometimes motorcycle, motorcycle helmets are good, sometimes they're not. And they're always probably pretty expensive at thrift stores. Bicycles. Just no inventory in the store. It's kind of weird. This is the second store I'm at today. Just no inventory. Got one shirt. All right, last store today. Got some clothes here. Just looking around the brick brack area. Oh, 
already. So what I did was yesterday I went to print a shipping label for Etsy and uh, for some reason it reverts back to like your first initial shipping thing. So I put like padded flat rate envelope and I switched it to medium, uh, medium mailbox into a medium flat rate box. And uh, when I went to go print the shipping label, it then converted it back to the padded flat rate. So I didn't catch it until I was at the post office. So I had to repackage the whole thing. Um, and I resend it out today, which is something I don't like with Etsy is their shipping's always screwed up. See if we got any taco mail. All right, no mail today. Dropped off that package and I guess we'll do the recap. All right, so welcome back for the recap of today's haul portion of the thrift store vlog. I didn't pick up a lot of brick rack. It was kind of deserted. I noticed this with all the thrift stores I went to today. It really was just empty. Uh, couldn't, couldn't really figure it out. Didn't know everyone seemed to have a sale recently or time of the year. But I thought, you know, towards the beginning of the year, there'd be a lot more inventory. A lot of people would be donating things, you know, and cleaning out stuff. But teach their own I guess and here's what we picked up got some Pyrex as always as always I'll get to that shortly go through the clothes for people who are new I am a clothes reseller this is my primary source of income so I do pick up a lot of clothes at thrift stores a lot for the most part a lot of the stuff is about ten dollar to fifteen dollar t-shirts and sweatshirts so we'll go through it Drexel first t-shirt this seems to be a school that I can't find anywhere Drexel I think is a big engineering school so everything that I find has Drexel on it, it always says Drexel Engineering. Um, whenever I do come across Drexel stuff, it does go quick. So it's one of those few schools that does sell very well. You can sell this on eBay and get, you know, probably 10, 12 bucks for it just because it's a hard to find school in terms of merchandise. So we have this t-shirt, Liberty. We have athletics, baseball, jersey. I actually had the same jersey in high school. I don't know why. It seems to be a popular jersey. Um, same one, but don't know if it's actually mine. We have some alcohol, whiskey t-shirt logo, a nice vintage Dr. Seuss t-shirt. Harvard, another great school to have. If you ever come across Harvard sweatshirts, try to pick them up. It seems to be a very, uh, very proud school for a lot of people to wear. So pick that up. Lehigh University, then we have some vintage Cowboys sweatshirt, Cowboys, Cowboys, Oxford University, Arizona State, New York Giants, Knicks. This is a Patrick Ewing t-shirt. I don't come across a lot of uh, Knicks t-shirts. For some reason, I find a lot of Yankee stuff, not a lot of Knicks stuff. We have a fraternity shirt, Pittsburgh Steelers sweatshirt, Villanova t-shirt, vintage Notre Dame, and a lot of these sometimes have stains on them like this. Uh, OxyClean usually takes them out. I might do a video on how to remove stains and certain stains on certain clothes because uh, sometimes people might be, you know, taken taken back by trying to pick something up because it has a stain on it. Moving along, we have a Italy t-shirt, Ninja Turtles t-shirt, this Yankees like a vintage jersey t-shirt, Mickey Mantle. I expect to sell this pretty quick come summertime. I didn't really notice all this. I think this is just from being on the floor. It's a little dirty over there. We have a Temple sweatshirt, Louisiana Lafayette, an ECU t-shirt. Here we have a Vineyard Finds. This brand sells extremely well. I've had logo t-shirts, polos. You expect to get a little bit of money for this. I'm not talking, you know, five, 10 bucks. You should get about 15, 20, sometimes 25 for Vineyard Finds stuff. It is, uh, uh, a couple years back, it was a lot harder than it is now, but still can get some money for it. Vintage Cleveland Indian sweatshirt. A nice vintage Georgia State sweatshirt. Bloomsburg University. And lastly, we have a USA Baseball t-shirt with no name on the back. This is great for Olympic time, um, even though baseball is an Olympic sport, unless they're changing that. Um, but for some reason, this does sell a lot of baseball. People like this uh, this branding. So that's that's what that with the Pyrex stuff. You might not be very familiar with this pattern. I think it's called Blue Iris. It's actually Pyrex made in England. You see the Pyrex. You can maybe briefly see the England part. So this all came 
together, it was five bucks for the set. Uh, three pieces, this one's a little bit bigger. England Pyrex, not very uh, pricey, not very sought after, it seems to be like, because for whatever reason. However, in America, it is very hard to come across England Pyrex. In relevance to American Pyrex, maybe one out of every 50 or one out of 60 pieces is not American Pyrex. It's not made in America, it's made in England. It's a different pattern. It's not worth that much. They're probably like eight to ten dollar bowls, but if you are a Pyrex collector, to find something that you can't find here in America, to find something to add to your collection you can't find in America, always great to pick up whenever you can. So that goes towards the collection. If you're interested in seeing that video, I do have a Pyrex collection video. You guys can check that out if you're interested in that kind of glassware and stuff. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure to hit that like button. And as always, have a great day. Keep living a dream. Peace.